he's the shove it man. Oh, he's the shove it man. He's gonna shove it. Yeah. He's gonna shove it man. Over the years, wrestling's been filled with some terrible gimmicks. Gimmicks that were so bad, someone should have smacked the writers one. From Chesterfield to Cheddar, there's been stuff you'd rather forget. But then there's the gimmicks that were so short and forgettable, they almost completely went under the radar, and they're barely ever talked about today. Here are the top 10 TNA wrestling gimmicks that you forgot existed. Of course, if you can think of any that I've missed because they're so forgettable, shove their name down in the comments, Jack. Number 10, Okato. Okay, okay, I can hear your flabby hands tapping on the keyboard already. You could put that down or I'd hit you with a brick. Starting with the one you'll be most familiar with, this one makes the list because it was only for a month or so, and most people remember his overall run, but not his short quick gimmick change. Of course nowadays he's a household name to internet wrestling fans, but back in 2011 this was simply not the case. As with lots of Japanese wrestlers, the young Okada was sent to tour the USA for seasoning, and unfortunately for him he wound up in TNA. Nothing particularly offensive happened during his first year in 2010. He mostly wrestled on the B-Show Explosion and was just treated as a generic Asian wrestler. This would all change at the start of 2011. It was about to get really stupid. So stupid that I might have to smack somebody one. The Pope was feuding with Samoa Joe. They were feuding because the Pope, a street preacher, was collecting money from the fans, but he was keeping it for himself. TNA really didn't pay their wrestlers enough, did they? Anyway, the Pope kept cheating in the matches, so Joe brought in some backup. It was Okada, who had now been renamed Okato. He had a stupid hat and thought it was the Green Lantern. I'm not a comic book guy, but this just looks so dumb. He looked like a chubby middle-aged man that you could expect to see in the background of a Fifty Shades of Grey film. And what the hell does this have to do with Samoa Joe? You've got an obese badass Samoan, and then you've got this guy. I couldn't think of two less likely people to be hanging around together. He didn't really do anything except dress this way, and the gimmick only ran for about a month. The gimmick was quickly dropped, but not before New Japan dragged him home and told TNA that this, amongst other reasons, they would no longer be working with them and letting their wrestlers go there. In 2017, TNA went to Japan and officially apologised for how Okada was treated. People always say that TNA wasted him. I say, au contraire, my little hairs. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. When TNA had him in 2010, he was not the Rainmaker, and he certainly was not the man that he is today. So why would they push him at the top of the card? It just doesn't make any sense. And without his experiences that he had in America, he may not have become the wrestler that he is today. And for that, you can all thank TNA. Number 9, Rosie Lotta Love. Things didn't start out well for this chick. She was trained by the Dudleys. Bubba Ray got her her chance in TNA, even though she was greener than Okato's hat. During her tryout match, she injured Daphne. Daphne would get a stinger from Rosie Lotta Love. I ain't talking Steve Borden. Along with a concussion and a bruised sternum. TNA refused to pay her medical bills, so Daphne sued them and was released from TNA. You would think that that would be the end of Rosie Lotterlove. She was given a TNA contract, oh for God's sake. She wrestled three matches in TNA, each one more clunky than the last. She was appalling in the ring and shouldn't have been on TV at all. I'm not sure what they were trying to do with her character, but because she's overweight, she's a lot of love. Get it? She started feuding with the beautiful people, but she was released before anything happened. Good riddance. Number 8, Shocker. More like shocking. Did you know there was once a TNA wrestler that featured in a McDonald's commercial? Well, neither did I, because I couldn't find this anywhere on the internet, and I spent hours looking. Apart from that, he was a wrestler in the X Division. He had a different look to all the others, but apart from that, nothing particularly stood out. Oh, did I mention he was in a McDonald's advert? TNA enjoyed mentioning this almost as much as that Relic is killer spelt backwards. Number 7, The Governor. I hate it when wrestling and politics are mixed together. That's why, like most of you, I'd completely wiped this from my memory. The former Daphne from WCW wound up in TNA in 2008. Although it wasn't Daphne, it was The Governor. She was all over the show as Daphne impersonated Sarah Palin over and over again in never-ending skits. First of all, they were isolating people who don't follow politics. And then second of all, it's American politics, so you have to really be into your politics if you're not American. Do you think any of the TNA audience gave a damn about this gimmick? The whole spiel here was that for some reason the beautiful people liked Sarah Palin, although they don't really seem like the sort of girls who took an interest in politics. They were also completely fooled and thought that Daphne really was the real Sarah Palin. The joke was that we were all in on it and supposed to be laughing about how dumb the beautiful people were. The skits involved her convincing them to do things that they wouldn't normally want to do. It was then revealed to be fake about a month later. Daphne continued to wrestle under this gimmick for a bit until the beautiful people gave her an unwanted haircut and she transformed back into the Daphne character. 
Praise the Lord. So politics and a boring gimmick that no one cared about. No wonder this is a gimmick that time's forgotten. Number 6, Sangriento. For a brief time, Sin Cara was hyped around the roof around his WWE debut. He was the next Rey Mysterio and we were supposed to like him. So of course TNA wanted some of that mask money. TNA didn't want to spend any money though speculating, so what did they do? They took an established high flyer who was already on the roster and put him in a crappy costume, glued some cheese strings to it and called him Sangriento. This was Amazing Red at the end of his TNA career. It was just embarrassing because it was obviously Amazing Red under the mask and it was such a pathetic attempt from TNA to try and copy Sin Cara. The gimmick would only last a few matches. Not long after, both the gimmick and Amazing Red would disappear from TNA for good. Number 5. Lenny and Bruce the Rainbow Express 90% of you aren't homosexuals, but there's about 10% of you listening right now that might be. And that's okay, because you're all the same. You're all listening to the Hawk talk, and that's all that really matters in life. The team of Lenny Lane and Bruce were welcomed to the ring by Joel Gertner. It started out sort of interesting, actually. Joel Gertner's delivery on the mic can make most things interesting. He talked about how it doesn't matter if the Rainbow Express are homosexuals, and it only matters what they do in the ring. Yes, a good enough message overall. They come out holding hands looking like Chris Jericho from 1998 skipping to the ring. Their opponents, who are a hillbilly tag team called the Dups, refuse to face them as they're homosexuals, and they don't wrestle people like that. The Rainbow Express were heels, and Don West in particular on commentary hated everything they did. It lasted about five matches, and it came across as TNA just making fun of homosexuals, rather than doing something positive. If you want to see what the fans thought of them, just watch this clip. All right, but enough about Miss TNA. I have a proposition. For you women in the crowd tonight, for any of you hose bags, you fat cows. Number four, Laz. A man dressed as a woman with his face painted like a rip-off sting. Laz would wrestle three matches for TNA. He wasn't particularly impressive. All of his moves were sexual, but for some reason this gimmick didn't connect with the TNA audiences. The full-blown version of this gimmick was way more crazy, because he was a man, dressed as a woman, with his face painted like Sting, doing a Britney Spears impersonation. Where on earth did he come up with this? What was he smoking? Unfortunately, this part of the gimmick didn't make it onto TNA TV, but Laz's short stay in TNA remains highly unremarkable. Number 3, Serelda. There wasn't anything particularly bad about her gimmick. She was just as generic as Amazon female wrestlers come. And it was so generic, and that's why she makes this list. She came out dressed in some Sports Direct clothes. She didn't even have any proper gear. She looked like a cross between Roxy Laveau and a loaf of Hovis. And it's not as if anyone really remembers her. Would it shock you to know that she had three pay-per-view matches? Yes, that's right, three. Despite her size, she wasn't booked like any sort of threat. She kept talking about some sort of history between her and Gail Kim, which leads me to believe that they were lovers by the way, but the fans didn't like her either. Despite her being a face, they chanted she's a man. Number 2, Slim J. This one really didn't last long, and that's probably why it's not remembered today. The year was 2002, and Eminem was at the height of his popularity. Wrestling gimmicks are often extensions of other celebrities and pop culture, so I guess it would make sense for someone to try and take parts of Eminem, who was the biggest star on the planet at the time. Unfortunately, indie wrestler Slim J wasn't just taking parts of it, he actually was a dodgy Eminem impersonator. He walked out wearing a wife beater, skinny, pale, and he kept rubbing his nutsack at the crowd. Of all the parts of Eminem you could pay homage to, he chose this. It wasn't like TNA made this kid do it, he already did it on the indies. Maybe I've got it all wrong though. Maybe this is Slim Jesus instead of Eminem. As expected from his body size, he's a cruiserweight wrestler. A cruiserweight wrestler who grabs his dick before every move. He wasn't half bad actually, but I can't help but laugh when I look at him. Anyway, he only wrestled twice for TNA, so he can shove it. Number 1, Triton. Given the nature of this gimmick, you'd think this one would be more memorable, but for some reason it literally never gets talked about today. I can't remember seeing this guy covered in anyone else's videos. Not that the Hawk has the time to sit around listening to some skinny 90 pounder who I could snap in half, talking about how great wrestling is in the modern day. I would probably start smacking my computer screen. This gimmick was portrayed by Ryan Wilson, who had previously wrestled under the gimmick of the Red Shirt Security in TNA. Him and his partner had a feud with the Black Shirt Security, two security teams feuding. This was almost forgettable enough to make this list. After this ended, he disappeared from TNA for a while. In 2005, video packages started to air of a new wrestler debuting for TNA. 
It was the Terminator, or at least it was Ryan Wilson dressed in leather with sunglasses. I don't think he was actually German, although they should have given him a dodgy German accent, that would have made it even more hilarious. He stalked Monty Brown for a while, and this led to a pay-per-view match with him. He was terrible in the ring, and during the match the lights went out as Brown was gearing up to hit his pounce finisher. The lights came back on and a masked man was suddenly in the ring. Triton had disappeared. Instead Brown hit the pounce on the masked man and he pinned him for the free. How does any of that make sense? The masked man was later revealed to be Midian, although this never went any further and it was never explained. Triton would continue to creak along in TNA even after this feud. He had a finisher which was called the T3, get it, the Terminator 3. He spent the last part of his short run in a tag team with Simon Diamond, which probably made him even more forgettable. How do you make someone boring? Associate them with Simon Diamond. Anyway, that's the list. Think you've got someone even less memorable? Shove their name in the comments below. And if you don't do it, you blow.